Good afternoon, guys. This is the second part of the chapter two video lecture. Okay. Uh, on the last video, I finished proving the equations of motion for constant acceleration. Uh, the idea today is to do some examples and problems. And the next video, will go, I will be going over the web assign. Um, just to show you what motion diagrams are, we've been talking about them before when I show you the position versus time graph and how the slope gives you the velocity. I finished last video as well by saying or stating that the slope of a velocity versus time graph is the acceleration. But bear in mind that it's easier to discuss about it when the acceleration is constant or zero. For example, you have there, we have here three diagrams. When a car is moving at constant velocity, therefore zero acceleration. When the car has a constant acceleration, then uh, and is moving on the same direction as the velocity, because remember, the acceleration and the velocity are both vectors. And then a car that is slowing down. A car that is slowing down and eventually can turn, as is shown in the in here, it's a car where the velocity and acceleration are in opposite directions. So which of these statements will be true? Right? If a car is traveling eastward, then the acceleration must be eastward. That's not true because you can have a situation where the car is slowing down. So it's still traveling eastward, but it's slowing down. If a car is slowing down, then the acceleration must be negative. Not really because the car can be slowing down in a negative direction, meaning it's going to the left negatively and it's slowing down because the acceleration is positive. So that's not true. That's more tricky, right? So what is true here that the particle with constant acceleration can never stop, right? And we will learn more about this when we discuss uh, or when we start talking about um, factors of reasons of motion. What makes a body move? Force. So in that case, we will talk about that. So I proved this equation using differential calculus and integral calculus. But on the x direction, the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity. That should be plus or minus, by the way. Now I can actually write the equations of motion and I start doing a few problems. But I want you guys to remember that all the equations can be generalized for when an object is accelerating or deaccelerating, slowing down. So first of all, the final velocity is equal to the initial plus or minus. In fact, maybe in this case, it makes more sense to talk about the speed, right? That the final speed is equal to the initial speed plus acceleration times time, plus or minus. When you use a minus, when the object is slowing down. And that will happen for every other equation. For example, the displacement, in fact, I can put now displacement like this, is equal to initial velocity times time plus or minus one half acceleration to the square. In that case, you use the minus when the object is slowing down. And then you have that the final velocity square is equal to the initial square plus or minus to uh, the acceleration times the displacement. So all these are vectors, right? However, as I was mentioning in this equation, we can start discussing, or we can start using these equations also for um, the concept of speed and distance. So for example, we can talk about final speed, initial speed, and then instead of displacement distance. It depends on what the problem is asking you or what's the situation of the problem. When you have a graph, 
normally we care about the vectors, that is the, like the one we did in the previous video, right? The displacement, the velocity, the average velocity, the average velocity, the average speed, right? Um, but, and then also when we talk about the instantaneous, in fact, an example I wanna do today has to do with the instantaneous velocity of acceleration. So let's say I give you that the acceleration of an object as a function of time is equal to 2t meters per second squared. And I tell you that for t0, the acceleration is, is equal to negative one meters per second squared. Yeah, right? So this problem, you have, an, and I ask you, find the velocity as a function of time and the velocity at t equals to four seconds. It looks complicated, but you will see that it's not. Now, that, has, that is a nice problem because in this problem we have a variable acceleration. So we cannot use the equations of motion, forget about it. What you have to use is a definition. The acceleration as a function of time is equal to the first derivative of the velocity respect of time. So I will get that A times dt is equal to dv. And then I will write here my expression for acceleration to t dt equals to dv. And then I will integrate on both sides. From zero to a time t. Let's find out generic, all right? And then um, actually, that's one. The velocity of zero is minus one meter per second. So that's called the initial condition, right? Because T zero acceleration is zero, it didn't make any sense. So velocity on zero is negative one. And then to some velocity. So when I integrate this, I get two T squared divided by two, from zero to t equals to v from minus one to v. And obviously it would be v minus minus one, v plus one equals to t squared. So the velocity as a function of time is equal to t squared plus one meters per second. Right? So now I can find the velocity on four. The velocity on four is equal to 17 meters per second. So look at all the information we can get just by knowing the acceleration, right? And if I know the initial position, I can find the, uh, I could find the position at any point because I know that velocity is the first derivative of position respect of time. So this is a calculus type of problem using kinematics, all right? But now let's use equations of motion. So now, 
Let's solve a problem that is on the slides. Okay. So the problem reads as this. You have the proof of that in the in here. So it says that a jet lands on an aircraft at the speed of 63 meters per second. So it lands. What's the acceleration, assuming to be constant, if it stops two seconds due to the cable or whatever, right? So a plane lands with a initial speed now of 63 meters per second. So the plane is moving at 63 meters per second. And then it's going to stop here. It's going to stop after a time of two seconds. So the change on time is two seconds. It says find the distance travel and the acceleration. Find the acceleration first. So you are going to write all the equations of motion because you assume that it's constant acceleration. When they tell you it's constant acceleration, you write your equations of motion. Um, so what equation should I use? to find the acceleration. You have to look at the data. You have the final speed, which is zero. You have the initial speed and you have the time. So this one. Then I can go here and say that final speed equals to the initial minus 2a, acceleration time. So the acceleration will be 63 divided by 2. That will be 31.5 meters per second square. Now, if I was going to write it in terms of that as a vector, will be minus 31.5 meters per second squared. And then we've already done this in vectors, right? If we're in the x direction, this will be on the i, on the i negative x direction. Um, now, let me show you something though. Actually, you're giving time. So, if I want to find the distance, in this problem, the distance travel happens to be the same as the displacement because it's just moving to the right. So I will just use this equation to find the distance travel, the displacement. Okay? So that was an easy problem. You're given the data, you look at the equations, and you see which equation you use. Let's do one that it's a bit more difficult. The other problem reads as follows. So let me share the screen. Uh, obviously, they're running here, but there. Since so you are driving at a constant speed of 45 meters per second, 
and then you pass a trooper on a motorcycle. One second after you pass the billboard, the trooper sets from the billboard to catch you, accelerating at a constant rate of three meters per second squared. How long does it take for the trooper to overtake you? All right. So that's a more interesting problem. And for that, you have two objects to worry about, yourself and the trooper. So what happens is that you are going to draw a horizontal line. And then you're going to draw here the billboard. So one second after, you, you are still moving. So let's uh, share this for now. You are moving at 45 meters per second. After one second, that's when the cop will go and try to catch you. Now, because the cop is not moving, the initial speed is zero meters per second, it's at rest. At rest means that you start with no velocity. But they tell you that the cop is accelerating at Three meters per second squared. Let's put here. To the right. Well, the first thing is, since it takes one second for the cop to react, when the cop starts, the car is not here on the same position, has moved. a distance um, let's put this distance d this distance d is equal to the velocity the speed times time 45 meters so the car is still moving some distance x you don't know. The cop is going to catch the car on that point. But this is 45 meters. So the cop, the car only travels this distance in some given time after the cop started to go after him. But the cop, the trooper, needs to travel x plus 45 meters. So what are my equations? What is x in terms of the person? Since it's at constant velocity, x is just 45 times time. Velocity times time. For the cop, 45 plus x, or x plus 45, is the, which is the equation, is the, post, is the displacement or the distance travel at some acceleration. So we will use this equation. V initial times time plus or minus one half AT squared. The initial speed is zero. So plus or minus, plus. You know why? Because a cop is accelerating. 
So this will be equals to one half, the acceleration is free. And it's this one. And what you're gonna get, guys, is a quadratic equation. Um, let's put it in here somewhere. Um, actually, here we have space. Forty-five. 45 D plus 45 equals to three halves D squared. I multiply everything by two. And if I do that, I bring everything to one side, I will have three T squared minus 90 T minus 90 equals to zero. If I divide by three, I get T squared 80 minus 30 equals to zero. All right, so we will need to use the quadratic equation. So let's show you that again, just in case you have forgotten that if you have AX squared, plus bx plus c equals to zero. If you have that, then x is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. You know what? This is not algebra. We're looking at real life values, time. And time be negative? No. So when we take the solution, we have to take that positive solution. So in this case, then A is one, B is negative 30, C is negative 30. So X, sorry, T, is equal to minus b plus or minus square root series minus series square, which is 900, minus 4ac, c is minus 30, a is 1, plus 1200, divided by 2, 2 times 1, 2. If I do the calculator for that square root, I get 45.8. So I take that positive. I get 38 seconds. Exactly. That means that the cop will catch the car 38 seconds after he started. In less than a minute. Not bad. Even though the car was still moving, he still managed, the trooper still managed to catch the car. And where? So I have the time and I have this equation. So I multiply 38 times 45 in 1,710 meters, approximately 1.7 kilometers, one mile. After one mile, basically. So X. 1,710 meters. So that's an interesting problem. That's in the slides, but I think the way I'm doing it is a bit, I mean, you don't have to worry so much about negative and positives. Um, they do end up getting the same values. They use the same equations. There it is, right? Oh, wait, did they take into account the...
Mm. They use a quadratic equation, that's fine. I have to double check. I trust my answer though, 38 seconds. It might be wrong here. I will let you guys know an update just in case. Um, they do use the same, yeah, X of the trooper equals to X of the car. Um, 45 square, V square, acceleration square plus two X. Way. Yeah, I think I would say that this is wrong, guys. Be careful with this. You can try and do it. Use my values. Um, I don't see any error in here. It's 45, that two pair. So this is the distance that the car is traveling, 45T. And this is the one that the other car, right? Um, is it one second? Uh, one second after, yeah. Yeah, um, it, sometimes the slides can be wrong, guys. Um, so it's good I'm doing a problem. They probably got something wrong somehow in their math. As you can see here, I'm doing all the math. Uh, I'm just kind of worried because even though it's close, it's not close enough. I gave 38 seconds. Um, they get 31 in there. So let me just check one half initial times time. He's behind X plus 45, X plus 45. He continues traveling 45 T. 45 speed, yeah, 45. 45 T plus 45, three half. I multiply everything by two, divide by three, minus B plus minus B squared, minus four AC over two. Let me recalculate this. Yeah, 38 seconds, they got it wrong in the slides. They don't show you their uh, details of how they did it. So I will say guys, the slides are wrong in this problem, okay? Um, okay, so the next thing is to talk about falling objects. I'm gonna do a quick summary. You can go and take a look at this, but I'm just gonna show you a problem and how the equations change for falling objects. So for falling objects, we are looking at doing the same sort of idea, but now vertically, okay? So what does that mean? It means that we now Okay, so let's uh So for falling objects, what we are going to have is the idea of an object either being dropped from some height or being shoot either up or down. What makes an object fall? Gravity. I'm going to give you a different sort of way to do the problems. Because you can have all the equations like, you know, the final 
vertical velocity equals to the initial vertical plus or minus gravity and time now. So gravity is now the acceleration. So instead of acceleration, I use gravity. But here is the thing though. We know that gravity is a vector. And when a vector goes down, it should be negative. So what is this rule telling me? That if a knowledge is going down, I should use negative. But gravity is negative. What is the value of gravity? The value of gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So what that means, it means that when the object is going down, eventually this will become plus 9.8 times time. Now, does that make sense? It does. Because if the only is being dropped, which by the way means is at rest, so that initial is zero, then the final will be greater than the initial. And it will only be greater if the object is. Now, technically speaking, it's true that in vector form, you could have a final speed that is negative 40 J meters per second. The magnitude, however, so the speed will be 40 meters per second. That will be the magnitude for it, right? So we're gonna be focusing more in the speed. We're gonna be doing the scalar way more. Right? I feel like doing these problems using the scalar form is much easier. Okay? So as you're probably guessing, every equation translates or cut, and by the way, for falling objects, gravity is always constant, right? I mean, we know that there are variations, very small negligible variations, but wherever you are, you can assume gravity to be constant. So we can use the equations of motion for falling objects. Now, the only thing is that some of those problems Maybe more complicated. All right. So let's um, let's do a couple of problems. First of all, I want to write the falling objects equation equations. So b final on y equals to b initial on y plus or minus gravity time the displacement on y, which could be also the height, is equal to the initial velocity on y times time, plus or minus one half gravity t squared. The final velocity on y squared equals to the initial velocity on y squared, squared plus or minus two gravity delta y, but the free main equations of motion. What's a, what are some important characteristics? At the maximum height, for any time that you are shooting an object or throwing an object, the velocity is zero. When you drop an object, when you drop an object, you are leaving, you are releasing an object with zero speed. All right. Uh, so anyway, let's, uh, let's do this. Okay, look at this problem they give you here. Let's share the screen. It's a typical problem of falling objects, by the way. A stone thrown from the top of a building 
is giving an initial velocity of 20 meters per second straight upward. The stone is launched 50 meters above the ground. And the stone just misses the edge of the roof on its way down as shown in the figure. All right. Typically what they will ask you is, find the height it reaches. Find how long it will take to reach the ground and find the speed when it reaches the ground, which is not zero by the way. So how do you do this? Um, all the ladies in here, I might have to erase it, but as the problem says, you are throwing a stone from the top of a building with 20 meters per second. So I'm going to put this in here, not exaggerate the height of the building. Do you even tell you the height of the building? Yeah, the half of the building is 50 meters. You need that. So this is 50 meters. The stone, so you don't you neglect the height of the person in this case, okay? The stone is going up with 20 meters per second. And it's going up, up, up. And then it goes all the way down like this. All right. The only thing that you should do, you always know, is that gravity is always pointing downwards. 9.8 meters per second squared. What's the velocity here? That's the maximum height. The maximum, at maximum height, the velocity is zero. So when the ball is going up, here, it reaches a maximum height. They ask you for that. And guess what? You can calculate it because you have the final, this is the final vertical speed, which is zero. You have the initial and you have gravity. So there are two things you can find, time, but you don't care about time. They want you to find, I'm gonna call this H, or delta Y actually. How do I find delta Y? Let me tell you something. Every equation of motion needs time, except this one here. This equation here, B final square equals to B initial square plus minus two A delta X or two G delta Y, doesn't need time. So you can use that equation in a situation like this, where you have the initial and the final and gravity. So here, I will say that zero square, the final on y square is equal to the initial on y square plus or minus two g delta y. Now, the final on y is zero. The initial on y is 20, 20 squared is 100. So clearly, I will have to use that negative. And I know it's negative because gravity is pointing downwards. So two times 9.8 times delta y. So what's delta y? If I use a calculator, is 400 divided by two divided by 9.8, 20.4. So delta y, is 20.4. I found the first part. 
Now, once a stone reaches the maximum height, it will come all the way down to here. So I want to find what is the time it takes, how long it takes, and the new final speed of white as it's landing, crashing on the ground. Now, what is now in the, in, in, when it goes down, when the stone is going down, what is the initial? The initial speed is the, it was the final zero. Right, it was up, I mean, um, I have now the height, 20.4 plus 50, 70.4, so I have delta Y. So this is what? When you have, a, when you are dropping an object with initial speed, which is zero, and you know the height, you can know the time it takes. Or vice versa. If you know the time, you can tell the height. Because this is a free falling situation. A free falling situation is when delta y is equal to one half g squared. How do I know that's true? If you go here, if the initial speed is zero, this cancels. So you only stay with this, which is delta y. So guess what? I can find the time it takes to land when it reaches the top to the bottom. Um, delta Y, 70.4 is equal to one half G T squared. Now, let me tell you something though. That time is the time to go down. Three point eight seconds. So this is the time it takes to go down. So I will have to go back to this part to find the time it went to go up. So the time to go up will be the final the initial, I have gravity. So let's do here on this part of the whiteboard. Over there, the time to go up. So when you study, you know, how do I find the total time? The final of y equals to the initial of y plus or minus gravity time. Right? Zero equals to 20 minus 9.8 T. So the time to go up will be, I think that's uh, 2.04 seconds. So it takes 2.04 seconds to go up and 3.8 seconds to go down. So the total time the stone was in the air will be 2.04 plus 3.8, 5.84 seconds, so almost six seconds. How do I find this velocity when it crashes, when it lands? The way you're gonna find it is by using the other equation of motion. Um, I have the initial speed, I have a total height, I have gravity, so I can use this equation. So for the stone, going down,
the final speed will be a square, will be the initial speed a square plus or minus two times 9.8 times 50 plus 20.4, 70.4. So the final speed of y will be 2 times 9.8 times 70.4, with 37.1, or 37 actually, 266 meters per second. And that's it for that problem. I mean, you, there's a variety of things they can ask you in this, by the way. And they got the same answers based on what I'm seeing here. Ah, they add, uh, they add the, um, they had a few things in here in the slides. You just have to be careful when you follow that problem. All right. Okay. So there is a small section here in the slides where they do the calculus part. I combine both. So I'm gonna give you guys another video next time. I will do that tomorrow actually. Yeah, tomorrow where I will go over the web assign and a few more problems, okay? Um, I believe I will have to do one more problem on falling objects, but my suggestion is go over the lecture, go over the videos, check the web assign, and if you guys have any questions, please let me know so we can have an appointment, all right? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys later uh, for the next one.